Hey guys, welcome back to Auto X, and today we're doing a review of the brand new BS6 variant of the Hero X Pulse 200. And to make it a little bit more interesting, we've also brought along the BS6 variant of the Himalayan. Now, of course, these two are the most affordable purpose built off road machines in the country. And we specifically have not brought in the KTM 390 Adventure or the BMW G310 GS because those two bikes are not affordable and they are certainly not uh, made for off-road use. You can tell because they have alloy wheels, they don't have proper underbelly protection, and of course, they're just a much better bike to be ridden on the road. But it all comes back under price now. The new uh, BS6 variant of the Expos gives no changes whatsoever besides the engine. The engine is simply now a BS6 engine and the power output has come just a little bit down to 18 brake horsepower and 16.5 Nm of torque. And now it gets oil cooling. These are the only differences in the engine and the entire bike for that matter. Now the Expos gets single channel ABS, whereas the Himalayan gets dual channel ABS, but it is, you can turn that off whenever you want to, which means that these two bikes are actually very nice to ride off-road or even in the city whenever you want to make that change. What I want to talk about the Expos is that it actually was the Indian Motorcycle of the Year award winner. It is the current champion actually for that. And there is a lot of good reasons for that. But I have to say, I've not been a complete hardcore fan of this bike when it comes to off-roading. Now, don't get me wrong, it is a fantastic motorcycle, but the problem is for taller riders, it's never been that good. Especially when you try to stand up on the bike, it's a very awkward position. When you're in the city, it's very nice. It's got more of a commuter riding style and riding position. There's lots of leg room and the handlebar is nice and close to you. But what that does though, is that it affects your off-road riding a little bit for taller riders, because you can't stand up properly. It's a very awkward position and it's not comfortable whatsoever. You can't grab the fuel tank properly and you just don't have total control. Now, there are a lot of things that make this bike stand out and that of course is the suspension. It's got really good travel in the front. It's about 180 mm. And of course the ground clearance of 220 mm. And we've got on some pretty intense surfs today. We went on the beach as well and had a fun time there. And it's safe to say this bike certainly can do a lot. And it is certainly one of the best bikes you can get into if you're looking to get into extreme hardcore off-roading if you're a beginner. Now, there are a lot of hardcore enthusiasts who actually still like these bikes, despite them being uh, more affordable and for beginners. So there's a lot to say about these bikes for sure. Now, they're not new models. We already know what they can and cannot do. So we're just going to talk about the positives about these bikes when it comes to off-roading especially. So if you're looking to get into off-roading, first of all, this is rupees 1.12 lakh X showroom Delhi. Now that is by far a lakh cheaper, almost a lakh cheaper than the Royal Enfield Himalayan and more than two lakh cheaper than the KTM Adventure. And now the good thing about that is obviously that it's very affordable and parts are very cheap and you can throw around this bike and fall down and crash and nothing's going to happen to your pocket. The other thing is you'll save so much money and you can invest in high quality gear, which will actually make you more confident and improve your riding capabilities for sure. So on overall scale of how this bike really performs, yes, certainly it is a great off-roader, but in my opinion, the Himalayan, which Ravi will tell you right now, is far superior when it comes to off-roading. It might be heavier. This one is 150 kilograms, but that is almost 200 kilograms. It is much heavier, but there are a lot of reasons why that is much better and Ravi will tell you right now. For the past few months, I've really spent a lot of time with the Himalayan and I've really started to like the motorcycle for what it is. Now, there are a few things that really stand out for me. And the biggest thing is its ride quality. The suspension is absolutely superb. It absorbs bumps so much better so much, so nicely, uh, whether it is in the city or even while we are off-roading, we, we rode a lot on the beach and we you know rode a lot of trails as well. It just absorbs everything that you put it through very comfortably and that makes the overall ride experience that much more smoother. This motorcycle, what we have here, is the BS6 iteration. It is slightly more refined than the BS4 model, but it is still not as refined as some of the Hondas and the Suzuki's that you get out there. Another thing that really stands out for me and that makes off-roading relatively simpler, especially for a rookie like me, is the availability of low-end torque. It just makes off-roading so much easier that you have a good chunk of its torque coming in as low as two, two and a half thousand RPM. Personally, I'm more of a touring guy. 
I don't do off-road as much. And with that in mind, I always felt that the Himalayan needed a better top end, better top speed. But as far as the whole engine and the way it has been tuned, it is quite tractable. And that is something that you really start to love after you've spent some time with it. Another thing that I really loved about the motorcycle is the riding posture. It is absolutely superb whether you're riding in the city or out on the highway, long distances, even while off-roading, the posture is just right. The handlebar is tall, it is reasonably far but not too far from the rider and that makes it that much more confident while riding off-road as well. That is not something that you would experience on the Xpulse because the handlebar comes closer to you, closer to your body and it generally feels relatively cramped up. Uh, as far as the suspension goes, this has better travel as well. Another thing that I really wanted to highlight is the weight of the Himalayan. It tips the scale at 200 kgs which is quite high especially while off-roading it is difficult to manage in relative terms when I rode the Xpulse it was a lot more nimbler, a lot more easier to manage off-road. Even when you have a fall, it is a lot more easier to manage. The Himalayan is priced at about 2 lakhs, about 2.3 lakhs on road, which makes it considerably cheaper than the 390 Adventure and the BMW G310 GS. But what really shines about the Himalayan is that Well, the Himalayan is not a perfect motorcycle. It has a few downsides as well, especially its weight and a couple of other downsides. It doesn't have uh, too much tech like LED headlights and things like that. But what it does, it offers a really good package for somebody who wants to learn how to off-road at a affordable price. It does quite a lot of off-roading and it can really upscale you as a rider as well. So I actually want to address something. Now the ADV segment, you know, it's it's full of all kinds of different motorcycles. And to be very honest, you know, what really is adventure motorcycling? How do you define that? There isn't really a motorcycle that really deserves to be called an ADV because you can actually go on an adventure on any motorcycle. Get the Xpulse, for example. It's a 200cc Enduro commuter. Then you've got the Royal Enfield, which is a 400cc, you know, heavy, also urban motorcycle that can also go off-road. Then you've got your... KTM Adventure and the BMW 250 uh, GS. And you've also got these massive mid-size segment and of course you've got the even bigger uh, 1200cc bikes. So it really doesn't matter what bike you're riding to go on an adventure. It's all about having fun. And can you have fun with these bikes? Absolutely. Now the X-Pulse, it really is a fantastic motorcycle and it actually deserves to be called the Indian Bike of the Year because it's a well-built machine. It handles itself very well in the city. And when you want to go on that nice weekend ride or on some nice off-road excursions, you can absolutely do it without any problems. The Himalayan, on the other hand, it's the total package for under rupees 2 lakh. Now, it's got everything. It's got the looks, it's got the comfort, it's got the power, and then it's built to go off-road and over any terrain, whatever you want to do. So the simple question is, how much money do you really want to invest in having an adventure? Well, we just found out it doesn't cost that much.